On July 18th, the town of Greenwich observes Founders Day, an event recognizing the anniversary of the land purchase on which the European settlement of Greenwich began. To mark this year's Founders Day, we'll take a closer look at an item in the collection of the Greenwich Historical Society that's inextricably linked to the story of the town's founding. I'm Maggie Dimmick, curator of exhibitions and collections for the Greenwich Historical Society, and I'll be leading us in a closer look at the official seal of the Greenwich Historical Society. The seal of the Historical Society of the Town of Greenwich, as it was then known, was designed at the time of the organization's founding and incorporation in 1931. Creation of this seal was written into the Historical Society's foundational bylaws, which indicated a seal should be made which would include a representative sketch featuring the landing of the first settlers. The seal was designed by Alexander Malcolm, a Scottish-born artist who specialized in engrossing, a type of calligraphy used on ceremonial documents and engravings. Malcolm's design for the seal depicted two English colonists, Captain Daniel Patrick and Robert Feek, in the act of signing an agreement with individuals of the Wekasqueak, a group of Munsee-speaking Lenape people. This agreement, made on July 18, 1640, stated that the Englishmen had purchased the land between Asamuk River and Patamuk for the price of 25 coats, which most likely referred to bolts of cloth woven in Europe. The Wekasqueak name for this region was Patuquapak. The piece of land where their meeting took place was known as Manakawego. The English renamed it Elizabeth's Neck in recognition of Robert Feek's wife, Elizabeth Feek, who purchased this piece of land in her own name. In the 19th century, the peninsula came to be known locally as Todd's Point. Today it bears the name Greenwich Point. In the 1930s, when the Historical Society was founded, Greenwich was a rapidly expanding town. The United States was emerging as a global power following World War I, and Americans and Greenwich residents alike were eager to learn about their historic roots. In 1940, Greenwich celebrated its town tear centenary with a week of parades, pageants, and celebrations. Malcolm's design for the Historical Society seal was used in commemorative publications for that event. In 1935, four years after the Greenwich Historical Society was founded, the Parrot Memorial Library gave them use of their building for storage and display of their growing collections. At that time, the Historical Society commissioned painter Robert W. Amick to create a large oil painting of the Historical Society seal. This circular painting, nearly four feet across, hung for many years in the Parrot Library. The painted seal portrays a harmonious transaction between the Lenape and the European colonists. There are many precedents to such allegorical images of peaceable meetings between Europeans and Native Americans. The well-known painting by Benjamin West of William Penn's Treaty with the Indians, for example, has long been held as an icon of American history. In reality, the relationship between European colonists and the Native Lenape was much more complex. Compared to the newly arrived Europeans, the Wekasqueak and other Lenape peoples held vastly different conceptions of property and ownership when it came to land and its use. These mutual misunderstandings and power imbalances led to a series of fraught and violent conflicts between the Lenape and English and Dutch colonials along the Connecticut coast and Hudson River Valley. Four years after the event depicted in this painting, the conflicts culminated in one of the bloodiest known confrontations, a 1644 massacre in which as many as 700 Lenape men, women, and children were killed, virtually erasing them from the Patuquapak region. From our modern perspective, it may be unfair to imply that the artists who created the Historical Society seal or the individuals who commissioned it were maliciously seeking to erase or disavow this violent history. But it is important to recognize and acknowledge that a pictorial version of a historical event that implies peace and egalitarianism when in fact none existed is one that effectively erases one version of the historical record while sanctioning another. In 1957, the Historical Society found a new home at the Bush Holly House in Cos Cobb. 
Thirty years later, the large painted seal was found in the loft of the barn behind the Bush Holly House, and when a renovation in the early 2000s transformed the barn into the Vanderbilt Education Center, the newly rediscovered seal spent several years prominently displayed in the lecture room. However, about 10 years ago, it was taken down to make room for a new art installation. At that time, Historical Society staff decided that much as the seal had been retired from our official letterhead and other documents, this object would be better suited to a place in storage. Today, the painted seal hangs in our archival vault in the Historical Society's newly constructed Library and Archive building. It's an object that speaks to the Historical Society's institutional legacy, but it also serves as a reminder that as stewards of local history, the Greenwich Historical Society is charged with interrogating such objects in the interest of shedding light on the past and telling more honest, complete stories about our town's history.